by senior year, then it became the like, you know, I had a million friends and I talked to like a million girls, but then it's like, you know, everybody's got these girlfriends and girls they talk to and, and yeah. not me. I'm like the, the, the fat friend at that point. And that's yeah. kind of like where it really started to, to hurt yeah. deep down. The bigger mess you find yourself in, the actual easier it is to get results. Mm. I was, you know, like I said, 330 pounds, basically just sat around all day doing nothing. Once I started going to the gym more than once a week or <laughs> zero times a week, yeah. it was pretty easy. Like I think I lost like 20 pounds in like the first two months. Mm. Then it started to snowball more because I'm like, wow, that's all I need to do to lose this weight because I'm so far behind that right. it, that motivated me to do more. See, what most people think is it's like, I got to start the diet. I got to start the fitness program. I got to start all of these things. Yeah, if you do too much at once, most likely it's, it won't be consistent. Like what's something that you probably didn't tell much people or probably haven't, haven't told about that journey that you don't tell a lot of people? The mess that you're in is the message you're meant to deliver. Your struggles are not just obstacles, they're the blueprint for the strength and wisdom you're responsible for sharing with the world. Keith, today I want to go over your 120 plus pound weight loss. And this quote summarizes kind of what we're about to cover. But before we really dive into all of the journey, I want to start out with the mess because every mess has a message. So I want to dive into that first. How big were you? What was it like? What was the downfalls? Like, let's let's begin there. Yeah, I just I, I love the idea of just calling it a mess. Um, yeah, because whether whether you admit it or not, if you have to lose a hundred pounds, like you got yourself into a pretty big mess. Yeah. So uh, I definitely got myself into a mess. I always like to tell people that. <laughs> When you get when you start creeping past the three hundreds, like you don't weigh yourself. So everyone's always, oh, how big did you get? You know, what was mm -hmm. your highest on the scale? Mm -hmm. And the answer is, I I really don't know because you just stop one. Just... Like as embarrassing as it sounds, like some conventional scales that that don't even go that high. Yeah, and mine doesn't. Yeah, yeah, no, it like errors. It, it errors error. after a so, little bit. So yeah, or or it'll do that spin where it goes all the way around and comes back. Oh, and then gosh, once yeah. it does that, you're not even going to sit there and count because mm -hmm. it's too embarrassing. So I do remember getting a physical um, in college and I was 318. Wow. And then I, looking at pictures, I definitely yeah. know that I got bigger. That was, I think that was like yeah. my sophomore year. And I remember getting bigger my junior year. So it probably crept crept up to 330. Like, I don't even yeah. know. There's some pictures where you look, <laughs> I look like I was 350. But yeah, yeah. I mean, once you, you cross over that 300 pound mark, there's no reason to weigh yourself. Um, mm -hmm. You don't get into a daily routine of just seeing it. You kind of subconsciously just like get away from scales. Uh -huh. But 325, I'd say was, was really accurate from, from yeah. that doctor visit. Wow. Um, so pretty big mess okay. that I got myself into. So so what was that like, like emotionally? What what was that person? Yeah, so I think emotionally it was a little bit different than mm -hmm. I think most people, um, especially being a guy. Yeah. Um, and I always think about that when it comes to to women and and weight gain and weight loss. Like it's it's different for guys. Like yeah. I was always a big guy. Uh, mm -hmm. big like football player. So you needed to be big, needed to be strong. It was yeah. kind of cool in college to be like the big, fat, funny kid. Yeah. Like, and, yeah. so it wasn't, you know, as, as bad as, as I guess some, some yeah. people have it emotionally, but it was more like deep down, like, yeah. and you know, I have friends that always joked about the weight. So it was yeah. more like real deep down kind of emotions, mm -hmm. but not as bad because, it's it's easier as a guy, like I said, to be like the big funny guy that, yeah. that everyone knows. I was a party animal in college sort yeah. of thing. So it was like it wasn't – it didn't seem as important as yeah. it was. But then there was always just those little things that kind of really get you. Yeah. yeah. Did you ever get like the nickname of like, hey, what's up, big guy? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. all like oh, – I had ruthless friends growing yeah. up. I mean, we're still, we're still like that yeah. too. But actually, I wanted to kind of get into this later yeah. where – I think a lot of that is one of the bigger reasons that I ended up changing because wow. my friends were ruthless 
and it was jokes and it was like coming from a a fun place but like after a while you know it starts all the the yeah yeah yeah. and then it's just like wow am i just gonna be like the fat kid for the rest of my life sort of thing like it's funny now but it's not that funny anymore sort of thing can you share can you share some of the with those things that they said i mean i think half my friends called me in their phone it was mm-hmm. chubbs chubbs yeah. chubbs that was yeah. like some people even knew me as chubbs okay and again that's more like a like a funny kind of nickname yeah. but like when you really sit there and think about it like there's some people that called me chubbs and that's the only thing that they knew yeah. about me sort of thing yeah um and then it wasn't like daily nicknames or bullying but like mm-hmm. the Just sad little. slash funny part is when you, when you're a big person you lose every argument you yeah. lose every fight because yeah. no matter what, it's you could be right or wrong, and then someone makes a fat joke and and you're done. Yeah. So it was kind of like that, where wow. it was just like in some way a reminder every day there mm-hmm. was a, a little comment or yeah. joke that was made. <laughs> yeah. You can't win. You can't win when you're fat. Yeah. And you know what? This is why I'm so intentional with my words mm-hmm. and with people coming in. I'm like, what's up? It's never bigs. It's always like, hey, what's up, muscles? Yeah. Right. What's up shredded. Right. So it's like you paint these, these words seem so small, but Mm. it really starts to define them internally. Like, why is he calling me muscles? Maybe I am muscles. What are they calling? Why are they calling me chubs? Maybe I am chubs. Yeah. So uh, I'm very careful of that. That's that's very true. Different time too, though, like in life, like, Mm -hmm. you know, those names were given in like middle school high school college it's kind too you know we think in in like a work setting i don't think anyone would have like said that to me which which also to your point is like if you know if i was in a mess in my 30s or 40s yeah you probably don't get people that that call you names or anything like that so you might not hear that sort of stuff and not kind of look at yourself in that light exactly so when did it start eating you i mean you're hearing this often yeah i think deep down always it it ate me a little bit like mm-hmm. i remember i remember like two examples one i always wanted to play basketball when i was younger mm-hmm. and i was like the, i was actually pretty tall and lean growing up and then middle school kind of came around and and that's when like the weight started to come up so like yeah. basketball got got real tough and i remember like basketball tryouts of shirts versus skins no, yeah. no, I don't even know if they do that anymore, but do, shirts and skins. And <laughs> I just remember like, I, I, I couldn't focus. I couldn't, I definitely didn't make the team because yeah. there was a point where I had to play with my shirt off. Right. And it was just like that. I remember n- not being able to take my shirt off, going to the beach, yeah. having to make some excuse that I was sunburned. I needed a yeah. shirt on. So it was just like those little things going to pools and not, you know, being comfortable there, those yeah. little things along the way, I think just like, slowly kind of ate at me. Mm-hmm. And then once, you know, I found football in high yeah. school, which honestly I think every big kid ends up being drawn to. Right. Cause yeah. you, you could still be pretty big and, and out of shape and still be get useful. in football shape yeah. and be pretty useful. So right. I had that and then I kind of fell in love with that sport and that mm-hmm. kept me going where it was like, no, I don't need to lose weight because I need to be big for football. But it was mm-hmm. really just more of an excuse when yeah. I look back at it. Um, obviously playing O-line, I yeah. can play any of the fun positions. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, once that was over, got into college. No more then, excuses. Then it was just partying and eating yeah. and drunk food and unlimited, mm-hmm. you know, food at the the Cafeteria. school yeah, cafeterias and things like that and then you know by senior year then it became the like you know i had a million friends and i talked to like a million girls but then it's like you know everybody's got these girlfriends and girls they talk to and, yeah. and not me because i'm yeah the, i'm like the, the the fat friend yeah at that point and that's yeah. kind of like where really you know started to to hurt yeah deep down it was more of that college experience and just realizing that like I could get a lot of girls, yeah, but I'm just fat and yeah. girls don't like fat guys. And it was just kind of that like that feeling that I had in college, yeah, which ultimately kind of led to me making a bigger change. Yeah. So. Okay. It's a, it's it's kind of like I always joke around that, especially with my wife, where it's like 
almost embarrassing to say yeah. like not being able to get girls was the reason that I changed, but it was more of an accumulation of just yeah. years of being embarrassed and just not fitting in because yeah. of my weight. But dude, you know what? Like it, I had the same at the start mm-hmm. of my journey. I wasn't big, but then you're the skinny guy, you're yeah. the skinny friend. Yeah. Right. So, and all your other friends. That oh yeah, you can have the shape. same feeling as the the big fat guy. Yeah. So, I mean, there's nothing to be ashamed. And I, I, I like it because you're speaking the truth. Mm-hmm. It doesn't necessarily have to be like, yeah, my A1C level was down. Yeah. You know, no. I had a heart. I was attack. too young to worry about health. Right. It was all. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's relationships. You're like, dude, am I going to get to experience something like yeah. that? Like, is that's? I think that's part of one of the elements of, of pure joy is to be able to find a partner that you can actually spend the rest of your life with and and you struggle because you see everybody else going through it and you're like yeah. am i allowed to experience that like what's like yeah for sure so and even can, if it wasn't as as you know as kind of simple as i'm making it like mm-hmm. girls don't like fat guys but you you struggle with confidence issues yeah so maybe maybe that has nothing maybe you know there's tons of people out there that are bigger yeah they're yeah. not you know as shallow as i just made it seem but it's it's really hard to even find out when you have zero confidence in yourself yeah so relationships become almost impossible yeah you're not you're gonna so say hi you're yeah, not gonna yeah. say hi you're like even when you see a cute girl walking down the grocery store you're just probably just gonna turn around and yeah. walk away right and just be like oh hopefully, hopefully i can make her laugh like that's, that's yeah that's kind of it. the only thing you're uh okay. forced with <laughs> Okay, so we got to that point, mm. right? Yeah, this is this this little pain point where where you're seeing your friends date other girls, and and you're just like, okay, well, how did it start? How did you start losing that weight? So, I was always it's it's funny too because for someone who got as big as me, I like I was always into fitness. Mm-hmm. Like, let me rephrase that better. Like the thought of fitness, yeah, I was always into it. The act. Not so much. Yeah. But I remember like being the first person in my group to like start getting like a gym membership and go to and try and lift. And it was like muscle and fitness magazines back then. But yeah. I would be like leading the workouts with my friends, but it was all for football. Right. Because I, I wanted to get bigger and stronger for football. So like just the idea and like the basic plans of how to, to get it done. Um I had that kind of knowledge, that basic knowledge. So it was always there. And I still joke about it today, but my routine in college was to go to the gym. Yeah. And it was the classic blow, bro split, yeah. right? Chest, chest and tries on Monday, back and buys Tuesday. And it was like for weeks, I would show up on Monday mm-hmm. and I would do chest and tries on Monday. Yeah. And then sometimes I would show up on Tuesday yeah. for back and buys. And then Tuesday night was karaoke night at the bar yeah. and I would go out and I would drink and I would eat and mm-hmm. then stop, not go to the gym on Wednesday. Wednesday. Okay. Wednesday was also a fun night out. And it, then it was just, then it would, all right, next week I'm going to go all five days. Yeah. And then slowly, like even the, the Tuesday started falling off and then it was just going on Mondays and then eventually that fell off and then it mm-hmm. just like never came back. Okay. So like the thought and the intention was there. Mm-hmm. Um, I did even have friends that would go to the gym, but yeah. I would just not just either be like too tired or, or hung over to even think about it. Right. Cause I got caught up in the, the party lifestyle pretty much. Yeah. So it was not that hard to, to like commit myself back to it. Mm-hmm. This was about my senior year. So yeah. I, I found a, I had a roommate that went to the gym. So yeah. I started going with him and I at least started just like thinking about it more that right when I graduated and I went back home, it was so much easier because I didn't have the the distractions and all the friends. And you know, I mm-hmm. lived in a house with six guys. So there was always something going on. Right. So once I graduated and I was kind of on my own getting a job, it was a little bit easier to keep that routine up. It wasn't yeah. as much fun. So I think if I didn't have that person that I started going to the gym with, I don't know if it would have it would have like yeah. ended up working. Who was this person? Uh, one of my friends. So I actually went to, <laughs> I went to college with a lot of guys I went to high school with. Oh, cool. So I had a, a friend that was trying to work out as well. Um, luckily, one of my best friends was going to school for exercise science. So he would send me his workouts. Mm-hmm. And, you know, whether I did them or not, I at least had like good influences around me. Yeah. Um, 
And then I got like we made like an official gym partner like handshake once we got back to school. So my friend would send us workouts that he would create mm -hmm. and we would go and and work out. And yeah. I at least got in the routine. Like they weren't great workouts. They weren't like I wasn't dieting. Yeah. But I at least got that foot in the door. So yeah. it was a little bit easier to kind of like get that snowball effect as as time went on. Yeah. See, I I like how you're sharing that because the first attempt was essentially a failed attempt, but yeah. it was still an attempt. Mm -hmm. The second attempt was now, you know what? I it's like, better. It's, it's nice. Let's let's have some proximity with someone that does it all the time. Mm -hmm. I think proximity is power, especially if someone's trying to lose their first 10, 15, 50 pounds. Just attach yourself with someone that is already yes. doing what you want yeah, that's to what do. I was getting at there. So, okay, and so you get there. Uh, it's more of the opposite. It's more of detaching yourself from oh, people that are. Okay. And I think that was huge so um, because, you know, the partiers and the friends that I had, like, they weren't working out, but they also weren't 100 pounds overweight. Yeah. So they didn't they didn't need to go to the gym. They didn't need to work out. And those mm -hmm. were the people I was associating myself with more. Mm -hmm. And they weren't bad influences. They just weren't good ones. Yeah. So I think it was once I wasn't around them anymore – then it was a lot easier for me to to kind of stay on point. Yeah. Nice. Then the really positive influences started to come around. Very nice. By the yeah. way, we have another guest here. It's a it's a fly. If Thanks. you guys see me moving my head, it's not just the caffeine. There's a fly that's attacking me. So it's been here for a minute. Okay. So so you're detaching yourself with these with some of your good friends. What's that like? Is it? Yeah. Is and it, it easy? wasn't like completely cutting them off. Yeah. You know, it's not like it has to be. Drastic. I mean, if you yeah. have bad influences in your life, that's a different yeah. story. Right. It was just more of like, if everyone you hang out with works out, it's mm -hmm. really easy to start working out. Right. So it was, yeah, it was more of just like once I moved home and I was, I was living at home, moved back in with my yeah. parents, you know, yeah. wasn't distracted 24 seven by college. Like then it was so much easier to, to do what I've always in the back of my head wanted to do, but just mm -hmm. couldn't execute. Yeah. So I think that's huge and i know not everyone can do that and i'm talking from a you know a play, like a place that not a lot of people are in which is that like yeah. college post college like time but if you can find anyone that is living a healthier life and it doesn't have to be like some great trainer that works out three times a day like anyone that lives a healthier lifestyle than you which yeah. if you've created a mess for yourself, it's probably a lot of people. Yeah. Just being around those people a little bit more will just kind of slowly like gravitate you towards the starting point. I love it. Yeah. I think people miss, miss that. They try to do this perfect nutrition program, fitness program, but what they neglect to see is the environment that they're mm -hmm. in. And Yeah, because when, when you're in that mess, I mean, the thought of see it. starting that journey by yourself is, yeah. is terrible. It's daunting. It's, it's too much. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so you detached yourself. What, what was the next step after that? Did you start losing like 20 yeah, pounds, so, 30 pounds pretty quickly? So I was going to say like, depending on how big of a mess you find yourself in, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's almost ironic because the bigger mess you find yourself in, the actual easier it is to get results. Like mm. I was, you know, like I said, 330 pounds, basically just sat around all day doing nothing. Yeah, I could have just went for like a couple walks a day or maybe just one walk a day and I probably would have started losing weight. Yeah. So the further back you are, the easier it is to actually start losing some weight. Right. And then you have to use that as the motivation to keep going. Yeah. So once I started going to the gym more than once a week or <laughs> zero times a week, yeah. it was pretty easy. Like I think I lost like 20 pounds in like the first two months. Mm. And then- then it started to snowball more because I'm like, wow, that's all I need to do to lose this weight because I'm so far behind that right. it, that motivated me to do more. Mm -hmm. So then it started leading to the diet. Right. Because the working out was there. Like I thought it was fun to lift weights with my friends. The diet, I think, is the hardest part for most people. Yeah. Once I saw 20 pounds just from working out, then I attempted to clean up the diet. Yeah. And then those showed me a little bit more results. And then that kind of right. just kept going and going until, you know, I got enough momentum where then the whole plan, that daunting plan we talked about was like yeah. in effect and I didn't even really plan it. 
just slowly built up. Slowly built based off of like results and, and confidence in myself. That's crazy. That's all it is. See, what most people think is it's like, I got to start the diet. Mm -hmm. I got to start the fitness program. I got to start all of these things. Yeah. If you do too much at once, most likely it's it, it, it won't be consistent. Yeah. Are you looking to jumpstart your journey or just excited to take on a new challenge? Over the next 30 days, we are running our first ever cohort designed to get you easy wins in your fitness goals. Over the next 30 days, the team and I are gonna be providing nutritional guidance, fitness support, and best of all, you're gonna be surrounded with like-minded people that are looking to grow. If you've been looking to jumpstart your fitness, create new habits, start your weight loss goal, or maybe your workout's just been a little bit stale and you wanna challenge yourself, this cohort is going to be for you. Now, if you're ready to take on this challenge, go to our show notes below, sign up to our free Move 30 challenge, and I'll see you guys there. Now, back to the show. Peace. Yeah, so you started to do mo movement, and then mm -hmm. you started to do the diet. So what was that trajectory? One hundred. So Keith, 325 pounds. Keith now, which is one, how much, how much do you 205 weigh? 205 now. 205, yeah. right? So how long did that take overall? So the full, I got lower than 205 at one point. Yeah. I think I was just trying to push it. Yeah. Like, I think when, when if anybody has over 100 pounds weight loss, they get to a point where they try and push it. I remember trying to wear like, medium shirts and just like trying to like <laughs> squeeze into like because i was just so excited yeah. that i could like wear this stuff like mm -hmm. that's a, a, another thing too which is like talk about some of the struggles when you get into these messes is you can't just go to the mall yeah. and buy clothes because usually places stop at xl or double xl mm -hmm. and you can't like so like a lot of the times is like just being able to go to the mall and buy clothes without having to find some like big and tall store like yeah. that's a huge win and yeah. like i know it sounds like silly to some people but yeah. that was huge so I, I got i got off track there too but I, I remember that like just trying to find the smallest clothes possible um yeah. but i did about I, I look at it as like it took four years to to do to get down to one <laughs> i got down to 195 wow one okay so it took four years to do that yeah. I don't want anyone thinking like, oh, four years, like that's so long and that's more daunting than the, the yeah. plan itself. But 50, 60 pounds came off in the first year. Wow. So, and that was like the easy part where I wasn't even like maybe 70%, 60% consistent on the diet, Yeah, working out, enjoying it, but nothing mm -hmm. like crazy, not like Mm -hmm. 6 a.m. runs or anything like that. It was literally just going to the gym, lifting weights, and just not eating fast food. Yeah. That's it for 60 pounds. Then that evolved into like, like I said, the confidence built. I saw the me getting stronger. I saw the changes in the mirror. And then yeah. some of the workouts started to get like more intense. Mm -hmm. And then they got fun because I wasn't dying on the floor. Like, yeah. And then – I got more confidence there. So it kind of, like I said, snowballed a little bit. I think like the big change and what I wanted to get into was at first it was all weight loss. Like I just wanted yes. the scale to go down. Just didn't want to be 300 pounds. So there wasn't too much of like specific goals. Like I want abs or anything. I was just trying to lose weight at first. Yeah. Once I got down to like 240, 250, mm -hmm. then I started seeing like a little cut on the yeah. arms. And then it was like, okay, like I I want to go like further. Yeah. I, that, that confidence brought me there. I ended up moving from Long Island to South Carolina with, with some friends. Mm -hmm. And we, we moved there. It was two friends. One left immediately. So it was just me and another guy. And I didn't have a lot of friends. I was past that like crazy party stage. And I just wanted to like meet new friends. Right. So I looked, Googled nearest CrossFits. Nice. And I was like, what's something I like to do and with people that do it? <laughs> just yeah. And I could find friends, basically. It's, it's funny when you say it like that. But I signed up for a CrossFit to meet people mm -hmm. and found a really good place, really good friends. Started like dating a girl when I got there within mm -hmm. like a month and it was like this tight knit group of people my age nice. and then it went from 
workouts on my own where I was just watching the scale to like, wow, this is really fun. And mm-hmm. then it turned more into performance. Mm-hmm. And then I wanted to, you know, get my times better, get my, my Olympic lifts up. And like, then I started to stop worrying so much about appearance, worried more about how fun the workouts were and started doing things that I could never do before. Right. So I, I remember 2015, I did Murph for the first time <laughs> and it was, I was 25 years yeah. old and it was the first time I ever ran a mile. Yeah. And then of course in the workout, you end up running two. Right. So after, It's more like a walk. Yeah. (laughs) After like three days of like dying on the couch, Mm -hmm. I was like, I just ran a mile for the first time. And that was like, that was just crazy to me. Like I could never think of doing that. Mm -hmm. So then it was all about just like how fit I could get, Mm -hmm. not how much weight I could lose. And of course that brought on the results as a byproduct. So I probably lost another like 40, 50 there. Yeah. And that's when- like that tail end of the weight loss happened. Yeah. So to get to, you know, 75 pounds lost, it was looking back at it, small lifestyle changes yeah. to finish the tail end. Yeah. It was about having fun and performance. Yeah. And then I think that's what drew me to kind of where I'm at now, mm-hmm. where I'm, I'm obsessed with jiu-jitsu. I love competing in jiu-jitsu, but now yeah. I have a sport Mm-hmm. that I can work out for to get better at the sport. Which is like your next phase. Which is the next There's phase. But it's still in that like there. performance category. But and every, specific skills yeah. though. And every now and then right? I, I go back to like the, all right, I want abs this month. Like I yeah. do go back to that. But in general, it becomes the performance piece, mm-hmm. which I think after that like initial stage or challenge or whatever you want to call it, like that's the thing that keeps you going because mm-hmm. everyone gets into that, part in life where like they want abs and then they get abs and then they realize like it's the same <laughs> it's, it's whatever it's yeah. just now just i look yeah. good and I'm, I'm hungry and cranky like yeah. but then if but if you do that for performance you, you get the abs and you don't really even care that you have the abs anymore but it's also like pretty awesome yeah so it's kind of pushing that that envelope where you start going towards that performance i think is not everyone has to be like a crazy competitor, but I think if you care too much about the scale or care too much about how you look, it ends up kind of falling apart mm-hmm. after a while. I agree. Yeah. But so when you, so I think this is great. And I'm, I'm glad you touched up on this point for, for your initial journey, you're probably looking at the scale a little bit more often. Yeah. Was there at any point, like spe- specifically the performance side of things, were you still looking at the scale at that point? Or were you just like, nah, dude, I don't have time for that. I, 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 w- I would check in and yeah. then I I kind of, I get more obsessive into the, you know, the, the performance side and just like learning about programs yeah. and because I always wanted to be a coach. So yeah. I don't think everyone knows that, but I knew going into it, if I, if I focus on the performance, the weight loss will happen. So right. I, it was more of just like stepping on the scale every right now and then being looking at it and be like, oh, cool. Like mm-hmm. I'm down five, five more pounds. Yeah. And I wasn't even trying. I love that. So yeah. it was, I knew what I was doing there. Mm-hmm. I think it happens to a lot of people on accident. Mm-hmm. So if you can kind of like find something that gets you those accidental results, yeah. it's even better. Yeah. This and this is what I see a lot of times when we bring people in. You're a trainer, you do you do you have your do one on one, but you also do massive group ones as well online. When they have a coach, that that timeline is like it's compressed. So their first 30, 60 pounds, instead of losing that in a year, it's happening in like months. Yeah. And then you have to have that conversation it was like, dude, we gotta start fixating on an entirely different set mm-hmm. of numbers. Right? We'll we'll track that number. Mm-hmm. But it no longer is like a big thing. You've conquered it. We know how to get it down. Let's start conquering these other set of numbers. And I think it's really difficult for a lot of people to shift that. Like, why is that so valuable? And and I think that's where people struggle. They just, they're still fixated. They still want to see another 10, 20, 30 yeah. pounds. But it's it's weird because, and I've seen it with just a lot of my clients too, where it's like, they they still do become fixated on the scale, but like they know they feel the pull towards mm-hmm. the performance part, mm-hmm. where they they start like getting into running or like 
all of a sudden, you know, month three comes by and they're like, how much did I squat? And it's like, mm, you've never asked that question yeah. before. Like, so the, like you, they know the pull is there. And then sometimes it's funny because they, they kind of just like say it out loud and I don't know if they mean it. I'm yeah. not worried about the scale anymore. Yeah. And then they're like, why haven't I lost weight? Like, it's like, I thought you were yeah. worrying about the scale. So it's like, mm -hmm. I think there is a natural pull once you yeah. start seeing that your body is actually capable of things yeah. because like with the mess you make, it's yeah. so hard to picture that body mm -hmm. doing something. Yeah. Like as, as performance related as, as yeah. you get, end up getting to. So like the natural pull I think is there, but the, detaching of the the original metric yeah. whether it was the scale or abs or something like that like yeah that is hard to let go i think if someone was to ask me what is the most difficult part of of these weight loss challenges it's exactly what you mm -hmm. what you said it's the pull between hey i want to get abs and then the pull between hey i want to get a better mile time mm -hmm. right that in between is the most difficult part for everyone's weight loss 100%. journey and if you can just understand and get through that and move past the actual scale and really, really start almost being obsessive yeah. with performance, you obsessive to, with, with corrective exercise or like getting an extra pound, dude, it's, I feel like it's easy. That's when it actually gets easy. Yeah. It's hard. It's kind of hard, a little easy at the start, really hard You're in the middle. 100% right. Right, and I think cool. when you're in that mess and you hear people say things like, it's really easy to work out every day. Mm -hmm. And like, it's really easy to go. Like, I like running and you just hear these things and you're like, no way. Like, it's, <laughs> it's not. It's like, why are you lying? Yeah. Like, yeah. I used to feel that way too. I'd be yeah. like, but that's, I think that's the disconnect. It's easy because they be, you become obsessed with the performance, with how much weight is on the bar, mm -hmm. with like, you know, those mile times. Yeah. And, of course, when you're in the mess and you can't even, you can't run a mile without stopping and, and mm -hmm. puking, like, of course, you're not worried about your mile time. Mm -hmm. You're worried about just like surviving the the workout yeah. or whatever it is. So once that feeling gets there where you're like, I'm actually capable of doing these things mm -hmm. and now I'm capable of improving it, that's when it gets a little easier. But yeah, you need someone to, you need someone there, a coach to kind of pull you away from it and just say yeah. like, put the scale in the closet yeah. for a second. That this is the phase that you're in. Yeah. And then let's start fixating on something else. Yeah. It's funny because they'll watch us, some of our clients, and they'll be like, Man, you guys do two a days, you're doing yeah, you're doing jujitsu and you're doing CrossFit. And it's like, and you're you're doing Murph every single day. It's like they think our version is harder, but in yeah. in, a, in internally it's easy for me. Yeah. I have so much compassion because they're in the in the pull phase. Yeah. The phase where they're getting split into two. That is the hardest. Yep. Like what I'm doing and what Keith is doing, guys, like to be completely honest, this is easy mode. Like yeah. we're we're on autopilot right now. And and it may seem like it's hard, but actually it's a lot easier when you get here. Yeah. And that uh that pull in between those two phases is like sometimes the autopilot's on. Yeah. Sometimes it gets shut off. Mm -hmm. And it it's hard because even even me sometimes, like I start kind of I get that old pull where it's like, ah, oh, I should be lighter. I should have, you know, my abs aren't showing anymore. Like the pull is always there. Mm -hmm. But as long as you can kind of understand like why the pull is there, it's just those bad habits. And yeah. I think it's it's what brought you to like what brought you to the dance. Like why you're yeah. even capable, like you feed off of, well, this worked to get me here. Mm -hmm. So I have to still be obsessed with what I was obsessed with that got me there so where good. it's all about change at that point. Yeah. That's the hard part. Yeah. And I think people are afraid that they might not find it. Yeah. There's going to be things that are going to pull you to like you fell in love with jits. Mm -hmm. I fell in love with endurance. Yeah. You're going to, there's going to, in that pool, there's going to be pockets where it's like, Hey dude, like I'm the right type for yeah you. yeah no there is there really right? is like lift more weight like that's what I, that's what mm -hmm. you like to do or like run more miles that's what you yeah. like to do put people in arm bars that's what you like to do when you get those little hints how did you how did you like all right i'm i'm gonna <sighs> man i don't know i think it's like i said there's there's always a little bit of a pull yeah and you always kind of go back to your default mm -hmm. sometimes i'll do that too i'll yeah. be like oh my 
my bench is I can't bench three fifteen yeah. right now. And then it's like, all right, follow why, that point. Why, what does that number mean? Yeah. What it means nothing. Right. That number is there because three forty five plates on each side equals three fifteen. Like yeah. it, a mat like stepping onto a mat and you have to fight someone. You don't get your hand raised because you could bench more than them. I get, I get, I get yeah. destroyed by people that can, can't even bench the bar. Mm-hmm. And like, so I think jujitsu actually helped me a lot yeah. with that, where it has nothing to do with your strength and your conditioning. Yeah. So that's where it's like, okay, I don't need to worry so much about this piece of performance yeah. because that piece of performance does not connect with this piece. So good. And that's a whole yeah. other kind of like, way to look at it but yeah. it's the same thing with the scale it's like this the number on the scale does not have anything to do with my mile time of so, course yeah. if i lose weight my mile time will get better mm-hmm. but if you just focus on the mile time getting better the scale goes down That's so i think so it's good. just yeah. that little like piece of awareness or talking to someone that's kind of like been through it yeah rather than you know just only going to back to your default yeah I have a, a question that I always ask my clients, especially as they start getting closer to the three plates of benching, three yeah. plates of squatting, four plates of deadlift. I think it's important to ask them who you're lifting this for. Mm. And oftentimes I think people lift these weights for all of your other buddies that said 405 was cool, was 315 yeah. was cool. Like you got to like, is this for me or am I lifting this for them? Right? Yeah. So for a while I was lifting a lot of weight for them and never for me. And the moment you can disconnect that, I think it's it's very special. Like yeah. you start to really, I think you get stronger to be completely honest. Yeah. Cause now it's like, no, I don't need to squat clean 315. Yeah. You know, I just like to squat clean heavy. That's, and, that's funny you say that too. Cause when I talk about the kind of the, the change that you have to make, mm-hmm. sometimes as, as crazy as it sounds is like lifting for the other people. Yeah. It works at the beginning. It does. Yeah. Like in the back of my head, some of my first workouts were like pushing through it, just thinking about people calling me fat and not wanting to, to like mm. the, the just prove people wrong. Like as, as weird as it sounds, like that could fuel you yeah. for, for at least to get started. Yeah. Someone says, oh, you can't do it. You can't lose a hundred pounds. You'll always be fat. Like yeah. that motivation, that little anger that you can have again, like for, from your past experience, like yeah. it can get you started. Mm-hmm. But it's it's not gonna it's not gonna last, or it's it's gonna you're gonna end up in the wrong spot if you only feel yourself off of that. That's so okay. it's it's funny, but it it can get you going, but something has to change at some point. I love it. So let's go into the diet side because we kind of mm-hmm. just breeze through yeah. it. What diet were you on? Did you did you Man. follow one? Did you try mm-hmm. like a thousand of them? What, what what did you do? Definitely a lot, a lot of them. Um, <laughs> but I'm actually so happy that I did that because now when I give like diet advice to people, like I, I know it doesn't matter what you pick mm. as long as you pick something and it's by choice. Yeah. I think that's huge too. Right. Cause if someone like forces a diet down your throat, it's never going to work. Uh-huh. Um, as long as you pick it, it's like sustainable, even if for a short period of time, like it will mm. get you results. Right. The, the thing that I also realize is that, the quote of, you know, everything works, but not everything works forever, I right. think is really important. And I think that goes into what we were just saying with the training, Yeah, where you can be mad that people called you fat and that you can't bench 315 and that could get you somewhere, but something has to change at some point. Mm-hmm. It's the same with the diet. So, I mean, yeah, I did some, some weird diets, um, kind of got into a couple of fad diets too, but mm-hmm. like I said, they all worked in some way yeah. or they at least cleaned up something. Yeah. In, in my diet overall. And then that led me to just like that, you know, more of like the lifestyle diet where you can just like not have to follow yeah. anything. You're more intuitive with it. But yeah. all of those fad failed diets mm-hmm. helped me get to where I am. So like I remember like convincing myself I had like uh, a gluten intolerance. <laughs> like remember when, like, remember when gluten was like celiac. the worst thing? Yeah. Like, yeah, I remember like thinking uh, I had celiac at one point. Um, but what that did, which was funny, is I grew up on Long Island. The two best things there are pizza and bagels. Right. S- straight up gluten. Mm-hmm. So because I was following this gluten-free diet, yeah. I couldn't eat my pizza and bagels. Right. 
it's not that the gluten was the problem. It was eating five slices of pizza and four yeah. bagels. Like that was the problem. So like that helped me just cut out a ton of the the cheat mm-hmm. meals. So it's like, again, I, I could eat gluten and be perfectly fine right now, but right. those things along the way help you kind of realize like what yeah. works and what doesn't. So just trying different diets. Again, I was kind of just fi- found someone that was doing a diet and I like kind of tried to do yeah. it with them sort of thing. But, you know, I, I didn't find the perfect lifestyle diet right off the bat, but yeah. it all helped me build towards it. I think every diet, I'm just, I'm very similar to you. I'm very experimental. Mm-hmm. I've tried every single diet. Yeah. <laughs> they all work in some way. And what's really amazing about this is you start to take pieces of it. Yeah. And I think you you see a master where everything is effortless. I'm going to show you someone that has experimented with different masteries and then applied it to make it their own. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong about trying diets. The the big the big thing that that people need to grasp is like, what were the things that I really liked about them? And what are some things that I didn't like yeah. about it? And is there a way where I can blend it very- Absolutely. Very flowy for my life. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because, you know, there's some diets right now that I do know work, but they just, they wouldn't fit my lifestyle. And I'm not going to say that the, the diet's bad, mm-hmm. but it just doesn't fit me. Yeah. But you're right. It's picking those things of, I almost think what doesn't work is almost more important when it yeah. comes to dieting and I learned a lot about that from from those <laughs> from those fads that I used to try right but I also like going back to certain ways of eating not like complete diets but just ways of eating mm-hmm. and I it's like it's kind of like me with working out like I'll be in a you know muscle building phase for a month or two yeah. maybe my diet's different during that or mm-hmm. my I don't want to say diet like my way of eating is mm-hmm. different during that. Mm-hmm. Then I'm trying to lose weight or I'm trying to drop weight for a competition. My diet has to change. So it's almost like more of like a little game that mm-hmm. you could start to play yeah. after a while. But the only way you can play that game is if you have experience trying a bunch of different things. I love it. So so people are probably going to be asking like, what are you like? What's a day to day like nutrition wise for Keith? Yeah, I think um, not that it's. If I could like point to one diet that you could like Google and or watch on YouTube is like the yeah. vertical diet. Yeah. But the vertical diet isn't even really a diet. It's yeah. just like being able to to get your nutritional needs with the micronutrients. Micronutrients. Yeah. And I just got drawn to that for a while too because and if, if it's funny when we look at these fad diets, mm-hmm. I think you find a diet because it helps you correct the mistakes of another one. Mm-hmm. So if it fits your macros was yeah. a big one for me for a while. And then I realized I was eating like five protein bars a day because they were yeah. delicious and they fit my macros. Yeah. And then you start to look at more like micronutrient or dense that you know diets mm-hmm. there. And then all of a sudden you start to feel a little bit better. So mm-hmm. I sort of started looking when I started that diet, I realized that like I can just get a list of 10 foods yeah. that all hit your micronutrient needs. Of mm-hmm. course, they hit your macronutrient needs. Mm-hmm. And then I got really comfortable just kind of eating the same thing over and over again, Yeah, which I know is at the beginning almost impossible. I think right. that's the biggest thing that people can't do is right. eat the same meal over and over again. Yeah, And I'm to the point now where I hear people say like, I can't do that. And that's just so crazy to me mm-hmm. because I could eat the same meal every single day and I eat it like I've never had it before and that Mm -hmm. it's the best thing that I've ever had. Yeah. But it's only because I've been through so many times of restricting and and Mm -hmm. adding and cutting things like that. So my diet is just trying to eat micronutrient dense food that has, that's decent tasting, easy to make. I think that's huge. Um, I mean, basically, it's a lot of like lean red meat and uh, rice, which yeah. is so easy. It takes like five minutes to make both yeah. those things. I have a rice cooker. Mm-hmm. So easy to make, I think, is huge um, just because I'm always all over the place. Yeah. Something that tastes decent, mm-hmm. something that helps me perform, and that's easy on the stomach. So mm-hmm. if anyone looks up that diet, it's it's more of just like eating things that are easy to digest. I love it. Yeah. Um, which big mistake I made in the past was trying to cut calories so low. But mm-hmm. always – one thing about my hunger was I still have the same appetite as I did as when I was in the mess. 
yeah. it, it, it has Hasn't not changed. changed. It's it's so crazy. So I'm a big volume guy. Mm-hmm. Like if if you look back at kind of how I got so big, it really wasn't like chips or candy or like that much fast food. It was my mom really good cook. She would yeah. make seconds. I would eat seconds. I would eat thirds. Yeah. I just ate a lot of volume. Mm-hmm. So I kind of used that to my advantage when I was cutting calories. Yeah. And I found myself eating more vegetables than like a human should ever eat in a day. Like it was yeah. absurd. I was eating probably like eight pounds of vegetables in a day. That's unreal. My stomach yeah. was yeah. Kill- like my calories were low. Yeah. My stomach was killing me because yeah. I would just eat like a pound of broccoli with just to just be expand. full. Yeah. Yeah. So it was like, that's what shifted me more towards the like, let's find foods that agree with my stomach. Yeah. So that I actually can eat those new micronutrients, get my macros in and feel decent throughout the day. Mm-hmm. So that's really all it is. Like same, I go to Costco, it's the same yeah. grocery list over and over again and, and I'm okay with it. Yeah. So real quick, I'm wearing my glasses. Mm-hmm. We're going to go Huberman on, on this just yeah, for, yeah. for a quick Got second. To. So macros, just to give the audience an idea, those are just like carbs, fats, alcohols, and protein, mm-hmm. right? Those are like the big four macros. When you're, when you're talking about micronutrients, mm-hmm. what do you mean? Like, what are you trying to get? Like, yeah, so um, the, that vertical diet, Stan yeah. Erfning, he's yeah. amazing. Um, when people get into really hard dieting, they mm-hmm. tend to go towards these same foods where it's like chicken breast and and mm-hmm. broccoli, like I was saying, like that. Yeah. And uh, you can get your protein out of it, but there's not a ton of your vitamins and minerals. You start it's to eat egg it. whites. You start yeah. to eat all these like things that are good for protein because that's what everyone tends to focus on. But there's no like micronutrients. Yeah. Some people take multivitamins to try and make up for it, but it's just, we all kind of know that yeah. it's not the same. It doesn't yeah. make you feel the same. You pee it out. Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, so just kind of, and, and I was like, of course you can get, you can go overboard and get like a blood panel or something and see what you're deficient in. But I think there's so many apps out there where you can just do one day. Like I ask people sometimes, I'm like, can you just track what you eat for one day? Mm-hmm. and look at, of course, the calories, the proteins, the fats, the carbs, yeah. but look at the micronutrients yeah. because sometimes you're going to look at it and realize that there's like one thing that's super low. You're like, and I then, never get any vitamin D. Yeah, right? and then, yeah, I'm, I'm inside all day and I don't mm-hmm. get vitamin D. Right. And then you find you know either a food or if you need to supplement with that yeah. you know, vitamin and then all of a sudden you've, you have so much energy. Yeah. So – it's like I said, one day of kind of just looking at what you're deficient in and kind of the 10 foods that I kind of just cycle through kind of hit everything. Yeah. Um, and that's enough for me to kind of just keep it like that. Yeah. Assuming I'm probably whole foods, yep. foods with color, it's, um, yeah. less processed. Yeah, exactly. So uh, I like to tell people like performance is a chemical reaction. Absolutely. And if you don't have the right chemicals to create that reaction, your performance is going to be lacking. Mm-hmm. So like you want to think of your body as that. And the macros to an extent create energy. Yep. But then there's all the other things like coordination, muscle Absolutely. repair, cellular repair, cellular destruction. Like they require minerals. They yep. require vitamins. They require nutrients. And if you start to understand that your body is a chemical reaction that's happening all the time, you start mm-hmm. to value a lot of these other things. Yeah. And that's that transition. Like I think – macronutrients if you're worried about macronutrients you're worried about the scale you're worried about your appearance mm-hmm. as you start to move over more towards performance. The, micro, the micro the performance then you look at the and then the macros don't change yeah but it's that continuum yeah. so if anyone is in the mess right now it's don't worry about your micronutrients too much yeah. like We're, let's hit your macros let's, let, get, let's, the basics let's get there mm-hmm. and then you know, these crazy things that you hear other people talking about that you could care less about, like they'll come eventually. Mm -hmm. Because once you realize that you got, you know, plan A down, then it's like, okay, well, how can I progress this? Mm -hmm. So, and that's kind of what it ends up being. And then it's those little things where you realize like, wow, I feel so much better when I eat these foods. So good. And even if it's, sounds like the worst meal you've ever had, that becomes addictive. Like feeling good becomes addicting. Mm-hmm. Almost more addicting than the the food is. It is. You just yeah. gotta you just gotta push to to start feeling better. Yeah. And then it's also like not as daunting as it sounds. It's not like 
you know, you're not a professional bodybuilder who needs to step on stage and you need to worry about every single calorie. It's like you can still live by like that 80, 20 rule, mm -hmm. eat those 10 foods 80% of the time and, and still be able to feel good enough and healthy mm -hmm. enough and maintain your weight where you can have fun. So, it's not like this crazy lifestyle you have to embark on for the rest of your life yeah. and you can't ever like go out to dinner with your friends. I love it. But, okay. So now let's wrap this yeah. to the, we started with the mess. Now we knew, we know how to get out of the, the mess with your, with the four faces that yep. you really just brushed up on. Let's talk about the message here because a lot of times we don't know what that message is going to look like, especially if we're living through it. In fact, when I hired you, I didn't. You didn't even tell me you were 120 pounds. Yeah, yeah. You, you you told me, and I was laughing. Yeah, it's like and one of the first like, times I ever like really talked about it. Like, I don't know, maybe it's just my personality, but yeah, I don't like to like tell, like try not to tell people too much, just because mm -hmm. it's like feels weird. Yeah. Um, but when people ask me, they're they're very shocked. They're blown away, and I think that's yeah. cooler than going around and telling everyone. Yeah, like, no one could even. No one could tell that I used to be like that. That's how yeah. far I've come. Like that, that, that means more to me than like people being like everyone knowing sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. And that dude, and to be honest, that's what breaks my heart. Cause I think a lot of times the message is actually not for that person that's mm -hmm. seeing you for the first time and then yeah. telling you, I can't believe you lost 120 pounds. The message is not for them. The message is actually for past Keith. Yeah. The one that was going through that. Yeah. Those so, are more important to me actually. Yeah. It's, it's the person when you're in that, you know, if four years, two years have gone by and you see someone that you haven't seen in two years mm -hmm. and they, they only remember the old version of you and they see you for the first time and they just like yeah. can't believe it. Like I think a part of the message too is like I know the idea is to like do it for yourself, but like those are, those are small wins yeah, and, and those, those feel really good. When yeah. you start to see people that you haven't seen in a while and then like, you know, you, your old gym partner, like you, yeah. you meet up with them and they stopped going to the gym there and you're all, you're looking yeah. the way you do. And it's like, it, it, it sounds shallow at first, but it's like, those are, those are just little validations that your, your hard work was worth it. I love it. So I think, of course you got to do it for yourself, mm -hmm. but don't dismiss some of those things. Yeah. Like that kind and, and just kind of like. You know, you don't have to go around telling everybody that you lost a hundred pounds, but like if you get to the point where no one can even tell anymore, you could look back at your old life and and stop and be kind yeah. of proud of yourself. Okay. I want you to talk to Keith yeah. going through this, especially at his hard times, because I'm assuming there were some lows in there. Yeah, definitely. There were some stalls in yeah. there. What what message would you want to like transfer? Man, I think it's like I always try and think back if I had like a bigger plan mm -hmm. and I don't think I did. Okay. And I think I would go back and just like say that, like just take it one day at a time. Because I think if you plan, you, you could have an envision of like an ultimate goal. And I think those are important to keep you going. But if I look back at, depending on what year we're talking about, mm -hmm. I would have never, I would have never guessed of where it would have ended up. Mm -hmm. So I would have just went back and told myself that like, you're going to end up in places that you don't think right now, like mm -hmm. on this kind of journey and just yeah. like be okay with that and just be open to things. Okay. So I think I did a, a decent job of that, mm -hmm. but I would tell myself to just be even more patient than I was. Wow. I think that that's big for everyone. Yeah. Big plan, vision, but day to day. That's all you have to worry about. It's funny because you're a huge planner. Yeah, I know. <laughs> For everybody else. And you know what? I think maybe that's why um, I am crazy like that. But then, t like, you know, the definition of insanity, I I've made a million plans in my life and mm -hmm. they never, ever go to according to plan. Mm. It's not that they don't, I don't get the results or don't end up happy in the end, but it's, it's never going to go to plan exactly yeah. the way you think it. Yeah. Like- and it sidelines you a little bit. Yeah. I yeah. mean, you know, when I first started, my plan was just to be like, have a six pack and like be a bodybuilder or something like that. Yeah. Like, I don't care about that right now. Like I found a sport that I love competing in, which I would have never even thought about 
doing something, anything performance related. So it's just, it's like the motivation of working towards a goal needs to be there, but like, you just got to know that it, it might not end up like, did you ever think you were going to love endurance? No, dude, not at all. Like, not even like, a thousand Murphs, to be honest. No, yeah. I mean, I probably not even one Murph at one point. I mean, he went from <laughs> yeah. one to a thousand. Like it's, yeah, you, you just, you really don't know where it's going to end up, but as long as you, you kind of put your head down and do the work, like it's going to end up somewhere good. Yeah. You just have no idea where. I love it. All right. Final question. Yeah. This is something I surprised. I don't want to give you an idea, <laughs> but it's like, like what's something that you probably didn't tell much people or probably even haven't told about that journey that you don't tell a lot of people wow the whole journey yeah, I might have to think about this one for a minute um maybe again like I was so big and the results started happening pretty quickly Mm -hmm. So I did get a lot of like compliments and like, like validation as it went along the way. Mm -hmm. But, and, and like when you're in it, it doesn't seem as hard because it's all those things we talked about that are kind of just like, it's that momentum that's building. Mm -hmm. But like, I don't think people really understand how hard it was to even start mm. like that. Like just that beginning is harder than anyone will ever like really know unless you've gone through it. Why is that? It's just, it's that those, those horrible habits that you create after a while, like I think habit change, I think everyone knows we're at the point now where it's like habit change is the biggest yeah. key to success. It's just like getting yourself to that, that point. Mm -hmm. And then like kind of admitting to yourself how, mess like how big of a mess you created mm -hmm. instead of putting it off like constantly putting it off yeah so it was more of just like how hard the day-to-day -day was even yeah. though i was seeing results and, and enjoying myself but like that uh this this like the inner struggles i think were a little bit harder than, so than you make it seem i'm glad you bring that up because I think that is one of the hardest. Mm -hmm. There's this death that happens, a personality death. Yeah. A death that served you for years, mm -hmm. right? Your identity. And then being like, this is it. This yeah. is no longer me, you know? And you can't just, you can't have a dual identity sometimes to be able to, especially if you're that deep of mess, it's just not going to work. You got to like completely detach, disconnect who this person is, a person that, served you and that was you for so long mm -hmm. and it's like no one knows about that yeah so. and it's it, a little bit of it too is like you're definitely scared to fail mm -hmm. because that becomes almost as embarrassing as as being 100 pounds overweight mm -hmm. when you're like trying to work out and trying to get and then someone like gives you that compliment and then it's like well what if i put all the weight back on what are they gonna say now and then it's like yeah I, I, that oh, that's that huge too. And th those are those like little those little daily kind of Reminders. like things. Yeah, that, that kind of eat eat at you a little bit because you've you've promised like almost promised people that you're gonna mm -hmm. change, yeah. and then it's like every single day you're faced with like I just wanna I just wanna give up sort of. And even yeah. if it's not like completely, it's yeah. like I want to go get this food. I want to do this. I don't want to work out today. Like those are like those little like the internal battle that you have to struggle yeah. with every day. And then like there's a light at the end of the tunnel because yeah. then it becomes that autopilot that we talked about. Yeah. But getting there is hard. So I kind of say that to like, there's no quick fixes. Mm -hmm. There's no like, you know, 30 day diet that's going to change your life. It's like you, you cannot let up for, I don't want to say a day. You can let up for a day. Yeah. You can't let up for more than a day. Yeah. Cause then you'll go right back to your old ways. But so it's it's that constant, like I can't give up sort of feeling that that is harder than most people think. But like it's just one day at a time, small wins, and yeah. it could easily, easily happen. Guys. Guys, hopefully you're just <laughs> writing these guys lessons and wisdoms because I think a lot of times when we go through these challenges. 
we think we're not the only one. We think we're the only one, yeah. right? And um, the the pain that you're in, again, is going to be the message for somebody else to take that next step. So hopefully you can understand that concept where wherever you are, especially if you're trying to lose your first 10 pounds or maybe first 50 pounds or your next 50 pounds, hopefully Keith's wisdom gives you some some yeah. insight and some hope. So Keith, awesome, man. We'll have to do more. Yeah. It's always Don't a blessing. Talk about this forever. Yeah. Bye, right, Bruce. <laughs>